sing together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain road. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. When I fight.
Yeah, ready for the new year? I want to open up and uh, just say prayers up for Miss Vicky. Uh, her grandson passed away this week. Uh, he was he was in prison. They were trying to get him out. He passed away of cancer. Um, kind of kind of hit home a little bit because the last Kairos that I did, he was actually in my group. Um, had a great conversation with him. Uh, talked about when he gets out, you know, he's not going back. He's changing his life. Um, but I have no doubt in my mind that you know he found Jesus in that time frame. So um, just prayers up for Vicky. Um, but last week, Pastor Rick spoke about uh, God being with us and, uh, and that he comes to us. And that was perfect timing. We didn't coordinate anything. Um, but that sermon kind of follows up. My sermon kind of follows up, um, you know, with that perfect timing of, you know, God being with us. So um, today we're going to talk about, you know, saying something to him sooner. Um, reaching out to him soon. So I first want to open up with Isaiah 30, 19 through 21. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in. So we'll get back to that here in a little bit. Um, something I heard that this week that was, it's super simple, but sometimes we forget to remind ourselves, is we are not alone. Everybody say it out loud. I am not alone. I am not alone. None of us are alone. Um, so when you're in a relationship, you're connected to someone else. This is the same thing as our relationship with God, right? You know, it's a, we're, we're intertwined. But why is it so many times that when we're in a relationship and we're intertwined, you know, especially with, with God, that if, if something doesn't go right, we get, we get frustrated, you know, in life, we, we kind of turn away. At least I know I do sometimes, you know, I get frustrated that, that I'm not hearing the answers that I want to hear. And, and I feel like God's not, you know, answering what I want to hear and when I want to hear it. So we distance ourselves and kind of push away. But we should be doing the exact opposite, right? You know, asking for help, you know, talking it through. Rather than just, you know, pushing him and putting him in a corner until we get the answer that we want or, or until things got to get right back on track, at least in our minds. So I'm, I'm learning more and more that I need to quit distancing myself, you know, when things don't go right and, and speak to him sooner and, and more often. Distance, I, I, you hear the phrase all the time, like distance and time make the heart grow fonder, right? But I think that's a bunch of garbage. I, I don't know how distance and time away can make anybody grow closer, right? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm learning, and especially in the last little bit, that I need to be in more constant communication with the Lord. You know, I need to be talking to Him all the time. You know, being a, my 10 minute, 10, 15 minute daily prayer every day, that's not enough. You know, being a 10 to 15 minute daily Christian, it, it doesn't cut it. But how many times do we do that? We say our morning prayer on the way to work. Maybe we pray before bedtime. And that sums up to be about 10 to 15 minutes a day. Where should, we should be going through constant communication. Because the problem is, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, that leaves us 23 hours and, you know, 40 to 50 minutes a day to be human. And a lot of times when we're human, we make mistakes. We do things that we shouldn't be doing. We're not seeking Him and getting the help that we need. So we need to speak to Him more, reach out, you know, whenever, when, you know, just driving down the road. You know, if you hit a pothole, you know, praise Him. Thank God, forgive me the car. Right? Um, 
You know, we don't have to look like the crazy person going down the road talking to ourselves. I found one solution to that. If you throw your AirPods in, you can act like you're on the phone in constant communication with them, right? So then you don't look as crazy as you seem. But one, I'm telling you guys, and I, this is especially true for me, one sermon a week, one YouTube video a day, one cliche saying, you know, one worship song or five minutes of a worship song is just not enough. Right? We need to go to him sooner. We need to be talking to him more, constantly. You know, there's that 23 hour gap. What are we doing with the gap? How are we filling it? What are we filling our minds with? What are we filling our day with if we're not filling it with him? Right? And if we're not filling it with him and we're trying to be good examples, other people are seeing us not going to him in constant communication as well, right? So the one sermon, that stuff isn't going to cut it, at least for me. You know, just coming in on Sunday morning and hearing a sermon and, and feeling good on Sunday, and then by Monday, it's already gone, right? Something's happened and it's already left. You see, there are two types of people in the world. There's people that charge their cell phone con like constantly, right? Anytime you get a moment, you charge your cell phone. How many of you guys do that? You get in the car, you plug it in, you get home, you plug it in, you're constantly charging your cell phone. And then you got the people that let the battery just go dead. How many of you guys are that? Pretty close. That's our Christianity. That's who we are, right? You know, we need to be those people that are constantly plugging it in. Constantly going to him, constantly praying, constantly talking to him, rather than just getting to a point where we're depleting ourselves and depleting everything that we have, and then coming to him when, when we're desperate and when, when we're in need, right? Always plugging in, always talking to him, listen to worship, praising him, you know, doing those types of things rather than just, you know, depletion. God wonders why we run around all day feeling sorry for ourselves and depleting ourselves when he's there. All we have to do is just seek out. Right? Yeah. Say something to him. If you just had a bad day or a bad moment or you're about to explode because somebody treated you bad at the, at the grocery store or they got your drink wrong, say a quick, please, Lord, help me in this moment. So you don't say things that, that you regret. So you don't do things that you regret. Going back to, to those verses, Isaiah 30, 19, he talks about the people of Zion weeping. They were weeping because the enemy's invasion of their land and was besieging their city. Think about your home or your hometown. I mean, you guys have pride in your hometown, right? There's a lot of songs about the hometown pride. We have that just, you know, good feeling about it. And think about how you would feel if somebody was taking it over. You know, how desperate you would feel. How scared and how worried that you would be on what, what happens next. See, God promises to bless his people. And then he responds to, to their cry for help. He says it right there in, in that verse. Um, in the next verse, as soon as he hears, he will answer you, right? As soon as he hears, he will answer your prayers, but he's got to hear you. How many times in your mind you think you say something, but you really didn't? I'm reminded of that all the time. I feel like I said it, and I swore I said it, and it felt like I said it, but I didn't say it, right? In verse 20, it talks about the bread of adversity and water of affliction. This is to let us know that, hey, I'm in control. I got you. I'm here. I got your back. You're not alone. It's like the people wouldn't. It's like the people wouldn't listen to Judah and when he was prosperous and comfortable. But guess what? Now they're listening. They're listening to him. Right? Then he goes on to talk about in verse 21, whichever way you go, he's got you. He's there to guide you, 
right? Turning left, turning right. He has you. He has your back. But ask him for help, right? Um, in Hebrews eleven three, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. He's there. It might not be visible, but I promise he's there. So if you put the two sets of scriptures together, what it sums up to be is he, he is there for you. He hears your cries. You have to be in communication with him. And the word of God created the world so that everything you step into in your life was spoken before you even got there. It was spoken. It's already all planned out. Right? So you have to have faith. And guess what? Faith is built through your relationship with him. Your communication. Building that bond. Building that strong relationship. That's going to build your faith. Right? You have to have faith. So everything I'm stepping into in this season. How many of you guys, anybody going through a season? You don't have to raise your hands. That's just kind of, you know, for your mind. If you're going through a season... That season that you're stepping into, it's already figured out for you. You just got to reach out and ask for help to get there, right? So that way you know you're going in the right direction. You know, he's always talking to us, but sometimes we don't ever talk to him. He already spoke it. Why would you speak to others or turn to other things when it's already been spoken into existence? Why turn to things that you don't need when it's already all planned out for us? Because we get desperate, right? We get desperate, so we turn to the pills, we turn to the, the, the phones, the websites, we turn to alcohol. Why, why do we turn to all that stuff? You know, it's tough getting through a season, but guess what? He's there with us. We aren't alone, but we have to ask that, for that help. The one story that comes to my mind, you know, I always, I'm, I'm a big storyteller, right? I remember having, uh, you know, not newly married, but younger in marriage, two little girls, and uh, was between jobs, so I started, my mom works at, you know, she works at a manufacturing company, and she got me a job in the warehouse, you know. So I was already fresh at life, you know, thought I deserved better, right, because I had a college degree, but I that doesn't mean hill of beans. Um, but I thought it did, in my mind. So here I am working second shift, you know, whatever it was, two to nine, um, grinding. I was working on this, uh, it's, it's a glass manufacturer, so I was working on a flat polish machine, right? Putting raw glass up, and, uh, and it was smoothing the edges, all that. I'm telling you, for me, I didn't enjoy it. Um, Especially the time I almost cut my thumb off because I tried to do raw glass without a glove. That was smart, let me tell you. Um, yeah, that turned me away too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but anyways, so I remember two, you know, two young girls. I was working second shift, and uh, that still wasn't enough. So I was working, you know, like I said, two to eleven or whatever the shift was, and then I ended up picking up another job at FedEx. Um, and it was, it was a weird, like, third shift type of deal. I think it was like 3 a.m. to like 8 a.m. So I was driving from Middletown to Tri-County, driving home, getting home probably about midnight, sleeping until about 2 a.m., and then driving back to Tri-County for the other job. I was pretty worn out. And uh, once my 90 days came up, um, I you know, was called into the office for my review, and uh, here I am walking in thinking I'm getting a raise. I got a pink slip. How fun is that? I'm like, I can't even do this work. All I had to do was lift glass on a machine, and I stink at it. So what am I to do, right? So desperation, I, I started making calls. Instead of praying about it, I just started making calls to buddies I knew that were in different businesses. So I, I find landscaping. 
Yeah, that was even funner. Um, so I start landscaping, and because uh, a buddy I knew, he was a manager at a company, and I think I was making like 10, 50 an hour. Mind you, two kids and a wife I needed the support. Then, yeah, it was rough. Um, so I did that for 11 months. And after 11 months, I finally got sick and tired and said, God, I'm, I need you. Why did it take me that long to figure out that, God, I need you? I need you to provide. I'm not alone, but, but it took me that much time to realize that I wasn't alone. And I needed to speak to him. I needed to ask for things. You know, I remember Mary talking about one time, you have to be specific with your prayers. And I, I was never. I was never specific with what I wanted, what I needed. But we get to that desperation point where it's like, I, I gotta have something. So finally started praying about it, started, you know, Mary started sending out, don't tell anybody, she started sending out my resumes and phone out applications while I worked. Um, so if, it's kind of funny, I would never be able to fill out a resume if I had to. Uh, so she was doing that. I finally, I get a call. One day I'm on a, I'm on a you know, a job and I get a call, one of them call me in, you know, for an interview. And holy cow. They offered me the job, and they, I didn't even have to do it. I just did a phone interview, and they offered me the salary that I wanted, that I needed. It was there all along. I just had to ask for it, right? I had to get out of my own way. I had to put all that other stuff to the side, relying on everything else and everybody else, and finally just go to God with it, right? But it took me that long to figure that out. So where do you turn when you need help? Where do you turn when, you, when you're in trouble? You know, what do you turn to? Think about that. What do you turn to in your life? What can you change in your life? Find times when you can, when you can communicate with them. You know, make it, make it a habit. Make it an effort every single day. Whether you set your alarm on your phone for, you know, to make sure because I know, I mean, I know we're all pretty busy people, right? But one thing I, I've made sure is I'm not too busy to have a conversation with the Lord. And I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. Good answer. Right? Is I'm trying to get better at it. And we should all try to strive to get better at it. Because he's there. He's not going to leave us alone. But we also, have to see, we also have to seek and reach out. Right? He knows what we need. But he wants to hear us say what we need. There's times that he reminds us that, hey, I'm in control. I've got you, but you've got to come to me for it. So think about that. Ask yourself, what do I turn to before I turn to God? Let's change that. When we are constantly talking to him, we get so off track. That we forget that we forget God has answers for everything. He has medicine for everything. Whatever it is, he has answers for. Right? Miss Vicky's grandson had cancer, was super sick, lost a ton of weight. God had his answer. It might not be the answer that we think we need in that moment, but he's got it. He's got the medicine. He's got the answers that we need. And it's always going to be in his time at the right time. Our time isn't often the right time, right? It's always, at least in my, in my life, every time I want something, it's not the right time yet. So we have to be patient with it. Maybe if we said something sooner, we wouldn't have that drug addiction. We wouldn't have that alcohol addiction. We wouldn't have a broken relationship. We wouldn't have a broken family. We would have the job that we needed versus the, the job we took because we were desperate and hated every day, right? Maybe if we went to him sooner, things would be different in our lives than what it is. So go to him sooner. Why are we so insecure? And I'm insecure and, and guilty of that. If, Insecurities go to him to fill those needs.
Band, you guys can come up. Those of you that are walking into a season or a situation right now, there might be some of you that you're walking into a situation and you're, or you're in a season where you feel like you see no way out. There's no, there's no answers. You're not on the path that you need to be. I'm here to tell you guys that our God says he will answer us as soon as he hears us. As soon as he hears us. Not as soon as we hurt. Not as soon as we're desperate. But as soon as he hears us. How many of you are going to let him hear you today? You have to say something to him sooner. You have to let him hear you sooner. Quit waiting till you hurt. Quit waiting till you're desperate and you have nowhere to turn. Quit waiting till you have no family or on your deathbed. Say something now. If you still have breath, you have time. But you got to go to him sooner. You can hurt for a while and not get help. Because guess what? Hurt and struggle doesn't attract the help you need. Faith does. Prayer does. Praise does. Those are the things that, that attract the help that you need. I am here to tell you, God is behind you. He's got you. You have to go to him sooner with your problems and with your pain and your suffering. He will heal it. He's got the medicine for that. God doesn't procrastinate. He isn't late. He didn't forget about you. He said, as soon as I hear you, I will help you. Just remember that. So call on him anytime, every time. Don't hesitate. Call on him now. Tomorrow is a new year. You still have today to call on him and get it figured out. So say something to him sooner. Let that be your end of the year resolution. Saying something to him now. If you're in that desperate situation and you need help, say it right now. Now is the best time as any. Right? I will be over here if you need prayer or if you need to come up and just pray. And say something to him now. And if you don't want to walk up here, I get it. Say something in your seat. Reach out to somebody to help you to help you pray. I remember at one point in my life, I was not a very good prayer. I didn't pray out loud very well. So if you feel like that's you and you need help getting there, reach out. I'll be over here. Say something sooner. Good job. You are here moving in my midst and I worship you and I worship you You are here working in this place and I worship you and I worship you cause you are
You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Yeah.